It's a double header today. Two videos for the price of one, and this one isn't even related in any way to Inmendum. Imagine that. Before I get down to the subject of the video, I want to address a comment that was left on my channel by one of, if not my most favorite subscriber, God's Dark Fist. And he says this, You're making it a habit of removing your videos as soon as you post them. Well, I saw it, and I'll answer you here. I think you get treated the way you deserve, uh, blah, 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 blah. I mean, you guys can read what he said, so I don't need to read the whole thing. But I, I want to address this comment really quickly. Um, I uploaded a video earlier today in support of Brett Keane. I, I kind of called out the, um, the atmosphere of bullying, the way that, that Brett Keane is kind of the uh, scapegoat whipping boy of, of YouTube that, that people kind of use to get uh, social reinforcement and pats on the back by uh, ridiculing the guy. You know, it's, it's not the first time that I've uh, mentioned something like that. Um, and I took the video down. And God's Dark Fist seems to be reveling in, in this idea that he's caught me with my hand in the cookie jar. Like, oh, uh, Fluffy Kittenist in full damage control mode. I guess you were embarrassed of that video or ashamed of it and you thought you could hide it. Well, I caught you. Well, no, that's, that's not what happened at all. I've removed two videos that I uploaded um, in, in the past month, and I removed them both for the same reason. The last one was a video encouraging Jesus Freak to accept Brett Keane's uh, donation for Stephanie when he was reluctant to do so. Now, the reason why I took that video down is because I found out that five minutes prior to me having uploaded it, Jesus Freak uploaded a video of his own stating that he was going to accept um, Brett Keane's donation, which made my video irrelevant. Now, this video that I made about Brett Keane earlier today was dependent up I made an argument that was dependent upon viewers being able to click a link to a video in the description down below to one of Brett's videos where he showed excerpts from his um, appearance on the Drunken Peasants. Well, five minutes after me uploading that video, Brett took his video down. And that took all of the impetus out of my argument. It, it, it destroyed the entire purpose of my video. So I took the video down. Now I assume that the reason why Brett took his video down in this instance is, is probably because the drunken peasants filed some kind of copyright claim against him or threatened him since they, um, y you know, these guys want to charge their, their viewers for, uh, premium content like it's pay-per-view you know it's not bad it's it's not enough that they're making um tons of ad revenue off of youtube they also have to charge um their viewers um extra shekels to uh listen to them wag their jaw and and i'm assuming that that's what happened but god's dark fist yeah i'm not trying to hide anything if if you pull the carpet out from under one of my videos and it and make it irrelevant then i'm going to take it down it would be like as if somebody posted a YouTube video asking the question, what is 2 plus 2? And then I release a video saying 4, and then the original video gets taken down, then everybody's going to be scratching their head going, why is the fluffy kitten is saying 4? Well, yeah. I, I mean, so that is why that video went bye-bye. Anyway, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get to the point of this video, which is entitled... Brett Keen is a heavyweight. Atheist's BTFO. Now, when I call Brett Keen a heavyweight, am I ridiculing his appearance or making manatee references? No, I'm not. I am suggesting that Brett Keen, pop, contrary to the popular opinion here on YouTube, is an intellectual heavyweight. Yeah, I said it. I meant it. And I'm willing to... Uh, <laughs> suffer the consequences. See, all kinds of uh, criticisms get leveled, leveled against Brett Keane. People make fun of his appearance. Uh, people make fun of his um, craving for approval, the way he's a propagandist for himself. He wants to get everybody to like him. 
Uh, people make fun of his accent, the way he um, makes words that end with A-W-N sound like they end with O-R-N. Um, and, and his intelligence is also frequently the subject of criticism here on YouTube. People don't seem to think Brett is, is too smart of a guy. Well, I think that with this video he's put out entitled Atheist Challenge, Brett Keane questions you in capital letters, exclamation, 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 exclamation. I think he's proven that he is, in fact, a heavy hitter in the sphere of intellectual discourse here on YouTube. And Brett, if you take this damn video down five minutes after I upload mine, I'm never going to bat for you again, okay? <laughs> this is your last chance. You better leave that damn video up. In fact, somebody in my audience, please do me a favor and just mirror his video so that it won't go anywhere. Um, anyway, though. So, Brett has released a video challenging atheists, and, and he's got a number of uh, questions. And he's included some video clips of uh, popular and influential atheists, including Neil deGrasse Tyson. Actually, let me be, let me correct that statement. Neil deGrasse Tyson, to my knowledge, is not actually an atheist. I, I believe that he's an agnostic, like many men of science are. Uh, Bill Nye, who, if I'm not mistaken, is actually a, a full retard atheist. And, um, and Richard Dawkins, who, of, of course, there's, there's no ambiguity about. And the clips that he's selected of these three men um, indicate a trend that, that I've noticed for quite some time which is quasi-religious thinking among atheists. And, and you can even see some of this in the writings of uh, Ray Kurzweil and, and, and this singular, the singularity business that, that he uh, has made into a subject of a matter of faith, um, I guess you would, you would have to say. Y you know, I, I love how atheists um, will always call out the religious for our credulity you know, so, oh, these guys will believe anything. And yet you guys believe that, that the Internet is going to become sentient all on its own. And in, 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 what was the time frame? 2025? Um, I, I can't even remember. 2050, 2025? So, y you know, you're more than willing to believe something without proof because it gives you warm, fuzzy feelings or, or you just like the idea. Um, but anyway... When I talk about the quasi-religious thinking that, that has become prevalent among influential uh, atheists lately. See, we have Neil deGrasse Tyson, um, um, Dawkins, and, and Bill Nye all kind of suggesting this idea that perhaps all of us live in a, in a computer simulation. Perhaps reality itself is a VR simulation. This is actually something that Neil deGrasse Tyson has been talking about for quite some time. Um, he's referenced the work of a, a another professor. I, I believe this professor's name is, is Gates, if, if I'm not mistaken, from the University of Maryland, who was analyzing the equations of uh, string theory and found buried within them a, a, a compiler code complete with an error protect script. Now, um, you know, to, to put things in perspective a, a little bit and kind of ground us in reality, uh, in other words, for the, the Christian here, my, being myself, to introduce a little bit of skepticism <laughs> into the debate, the string theory was created by human beings. And computer code is also cr created by human beings. So is it really that... Um, incredible that, that we would find um, meaningful patterns buried within the equations of string theory? Well, maybe not. But, you know, I find it utterly fascinating the way atheists seem to be trying to reinvent the wheel in, in terms of religion. And, you know, what really jumped out for me 
um, among these uh, video clips that, that Brett Keane selected in his video were, were Bill Nye's remarks. And I had actually not seen these previous to uh, Brett's video. So I'm very grateful to Brett for, uh, for posting that video. Because when Bill Nye was talking about the possibility that perhaps we all live in a intricate um, virtual reality, a matrix, if you will, he used a very specific term to posit, um, you know, what the origin of that matrix might be. And that term was super entity. Let me repeat that. Super entity. <laughs> You, you know, what what cracks me up the most is imagining the mental gymnastics that Bill Nye had to do to avoid using the term supreme being. <laughs> Since that's that's a direct <laughs> synonym. I, I, I mean, I mean, let's let's break it down. Let's <laughs> let's actually uh, deconstruct this a little bit. We have two parts of this term. OK, the first part being super, the second part being entity. Super and Supreme are roughly synonymous. That's why the expensive gas at the pump might be labeled Super, or it might be labeled Supreme. And Entity, the word Entity, is, is roughly uh, synonymous with the word Being. Um, so when we're referencing alien life, we, we might say extraterrestrial entities, or we might say ent extraterrestrial beings. So Bill Nye will speak of the possibility of a super entity creating um, a, a virtual matrix that we all live in. But he, he would never use the term supreme being. You know, what I find fascinating about this is the idea that the world we see around us might be an illusion is hardly anything new. It's, it's what Christians have believed for 2,000 years. And atheists want to reinvent the wheel. And, and what I find the most interesting about this is that it, it, it really seems to have everything to do with, um, with political correctness. I, I think that, um, I think that uh, a lot of people in 2016, pr particularly millennials, think that there's something shameful or embarrassing about believing silly old superstitions that those ancient human beings believed thousands of years ago because we're so much more advanced now, right? We've progressed so far as a species. It's just silly to talk about notions of God. But we can talk about VR matrices, <laughs> multiverses, other dimensions, um, super entities. You know, essentially, atheists are reinventing the wheel. They think that there's something embarrassing or, or um, shameful about uh, um, uh, exploring their, their spirituality. So th th they're, just, um, they're just changing their terms. They're redefining the discourse and um, trying to couch the same ideas in, in the terms of, of science, essentially. And, um, you know, while this is a trend that I noticed a long time ago, I think the fact that Brett selected these three video clips in his um, challenge to atheists indicates that, that Brett Keane is, in fact, whether you want to admit it or not, I, I mean, this might be an uncomfortable, um, oh my goodness, the Cubs just won the World Series kind of moment. But yeah, I think it indicates that Brett is an intellectual heavy hitter. I mean, the guy has a lot on the ball upstairs. And, um, you know, I, I, I just wanted to uh, make a, a little video about that and, um, and, and see what, what you guys think about this trend of atheists um, exhibiting quasi-religious tendencies and, and pseudo-religious ideas. So um, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Can I just ask you, I was at two Elon Musk questions. Any chance we're living in a simulation, as he's described? Yeah, I think uh, this, this idea came forth back in, in the 1990s. It was a philosopher, forgive me, I, I've forgotten his name.
uh, who thought it, as computing power grows, we can create worlds in a computer. Wait a right? second, like we're living in the matrix? I'm getting there. I, I, I got this. I, <laughs> right, right. I, you get I, I got this. So, so if you have tremendous computing power, you can simulate every possible thing that could occur, right. including the neurosynaptic sure. firings in the characters that you create. So in that sense, why? What's to stop you from thinking that the characters you created are themselves real? Now, if you've created this world and the world has built into it a kind of pseudo free will, maybe those characters will say, I want to create a simulation. So then they create simulations right. within the simulations. Step back and ask, how many total simulations are there? How many total worlds are there out there? There's only one real world and everything else is a simulation. Which are you more likely to be so in? I'm in the real world. <laughs> now, I'm here today to talk to you about reality. I'm here to tell you about what you already know. That this, all oh, this is not real. It is merely the limitation of our senses, which are meager devices. Your angers and your griefs and your separations are a fevered hallucination, once suffered by us all, we prisoners of light and matter. And there we all are, our faces pressed to the bars, looking out, looking up, asking the question, begging the question, are you there? 